Hey, how's it going? Let's take a look at what's in the news. First up, let's talk about our planet's great protector, the ozone layer. A few decades ago, it was in a bit of trouble, but global action was taken in the 90s to protect it, and now studies say it's doing better than ever. This is the ozone layer. You might not be able to see it, but it's definitely there. It stops most of the sun's harmful UV light from hitting us. I like to think of it kind of like a superhero. And like all superheroes, the ozone has a kryptonite. Chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs. They used to be in some really common things. When CFCs are released into the atmosphere, they weaken the ozone layer. And in the 80s, people discovered there was a big hole in ozone above Antarctica, which was not good. World leaders swung into action, CFCs were banned, and the ozone started to heal itself. Flash forward 32 years to today, experts reckon the ozone layer is improving and will be completely healed by the 2060s. It's a pretty great result, but experts say there's still more work to do to keep the ozone layer healthy and strong. Australia has some weird weather at the best of times, but overnight things got extra weird in Canberra. So yesterday it was a great day. 25 degrees, sunny, no worries. But today, everyone woke up to this. The temp dropped to zero degrees overnight and it rained, so cue snow. It wasn't just Canberra either. The Blue Mountains was also swept up in the cold snap. And now it's time for the announcement you've waited, well, not that long for it all, really. BTS are back in business. The K-pop group announced they were taking an indefinite break early last month because they wanted to live the lives of ordinary 20-year-olds. Now, five weeks later, they were spotted travelling to film a new TV show. Guess life as an ordinary 20-year-old isn't as cool as being an international superstar. Reading to yourself is fun, but reading to an animal is even better. An Aussie school program has kids reading to dogs to give them confidence. And once you see the dog they're reading to, you'll want to sign up as well. Meet Baron. According to his owner, he's the biggest dog in Australia. Yeah, Baron's an English Mastiff. He's uh, just turned five years old. Uh, he's currently 127 kilos. And right now, he's this class's reading buddy. Morning. Morning, Baron. Morning, children. Baron is just one of hundreds of puppers involved in the Story Dogs program, which helps build kids' confidence in reading. If we put them in now, it's very fun because um, he's a very good dog and I like how he listens to you read. Sophie reckons that with Baron's help, she'll grow up to be a great reader. When I'm older, if I don't know all these words, I won't be smarter. So that's why I want to be smart. So that's why I read a lot of books and they make me learn a lot of new things. And now it's time to check in with some people and animals who have found themselves a little trapped in captive audiences. <gasps> I wonder what this guy has been up to. Get it? Been up to? No. Anywho, this wombat was stuck in a feed bin at an animal shelter in New South Wales, looking a little guilty and, well, a little stuck. His name is Mr Magoo, and apparently he has a history of climbing up into the bins to sneak a snack. People have come to the rescue of a pod of orcas that were trapped on a beach in Argentina. Authorities aren't sure how the orcas beach themselves, but this crew of firefighters, marine biologists and volunteers managed to pull six of them back to safety. Good work, guys. And what do you do when you're a massive movie star and get the chance to talk to an astronaut on the ISS? Well, now that I have you all the way up at the space station, let's talk about me. <laughs> how, do, how do we do? To be fair, NASA astronaut Nick Haig had just been given a sneak screening of Brad Pitt's new sci-fi movie, Ad Astra. I gotta tell you, it was, uh, it was really good. Of course, Brad checked in with what experiments the astronauts up there were working on, what spacewalking is like, and how the crew managed to sleep when they see 16 sunrises and 16 sunsets every day. Wow, that sounds majestic, but very annoying. 
Well, that's all the news for today, but we want to know, if you've got a question for an astronaut or Brad Pitt, what would you ask? Let us know in the comments below and make sure you hit that subscribe button.